Hello everybody, this is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. <coughs> and we're here in downtown Oakland for the No Doppel or No Dakota Access Pipeline Solidarity uh, with Standing Rock demonstration. Uh, hashtag No DAPL. Uh, this is the third demonstration in the Bay Area in the last week and a half. Uh, we were out there at the Federal Building in San Francisco uh, last Wednesday, and then we were in San Francisco last week. Um, and now we're here at the Oakland City Hall. And it looks like we got a pretty good crowd that's uh, showing up here. And we should have some speakers here in a few minutes. So bear with us. Anyway, glad you just joined us. We're at Oakland City Hall at Oscar Grand Plaza for the No DAPL Dakota Access Pipeline protest in solidarity with Standing Rock in North Dakota. Glad you could join us. Uh, speakers will be starting here in just a few minutes. We got a nice crowd. Looks like about maybe 200 people, and is growing by the minute. So uh, just uh, be patient. There we, go. there we go. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome here to Oscar Grant Plaza. We're all here for uh, a very important cause today. And uh, my name is Andres Soto. I'm with Committees for a Better Environment and uh, also on KPFA. And so uh, I'd just like to let you know that uh, we're going to get started in just a few minutes. We're waiting for a couple more speakers, so enjoy yourselves, have some great conversations, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Thank you. So those of you familiar with Standing Rock and what's going on at, uh, with the Dakota Access, North Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, basically, uh, uh, there was a court decision that was on the last Friday which ruled against the uh, tribe they were suing for the burial rights on the land that was private property and they lost uh, their ruling it's going to be appealed but they did lose the ruling and but the federal government Justice Department stepped in at the last minute and called for an environmental review of all the areas uh, where the pipe, there's a lake that flows 
near uh, Missouri River and the pipeline has to go underneath of it. And so the federal government called out for further environmental review and has temporarily halted the construction of the pipeline on public lands. But that doesn't stop uh, the private company from doing more construction on the private lands where they've already started excavating the uh, burial site, which was the scene of so much contention last week with the dogs and G4S private security, which is a real scumbag outfit. Uh, G4S, you'll see them in Palestine uh, fighting Black Lives Matters. Uh, they're basically a fascist uh, security organization. Uh, if anybody remembers the Pinkertons from years ago, well, here's another stupid freaking security company we, we like that are basically the strong arms of the capitalists. If, uh, they'd be willing to participate in a group photo that will send uh, our friends in North Dakota to the love from the Bay Area. So there's a little bit of choreography, so I'm going to ask first all the flag holders to actually step back and move back to either side of the stand with Standing Rock banners. And they're going to do that. And then I'm going to ask every single person here to get up on these steps and on the sides of people are willing to sit down. And we want to see the number so we can send our love to, the, to our folks at Standing Rock. All right, so everybody's going to get the group shot here, folks. You can actually see how many people are here. Anyway, glad you joined us. Uh, we're going to be here for the next hour and a half to two hours. As you know, uh, this live streamer, Freeman Sullivan, uh, I was at uh, quite a few protests. Uh, most of them actually in D.C. Uh, for the No Keystone XL. Uh, this isn't really all that much different. And basically, you know, folks, if we really want things to change, you're going to have to change your way of life. Uh, these pipelines are going to continue to be built as long as there's a demand for oil and a demand for fossil fuel. So remember that. And that means, you know, like instead of driving everywhere, I know the cost of gasoline is cheap, but you know, try walking or taking public transportation. You know, it's just the little things and they add up. You know, and you don't really realize it, you know. So that's my two cents on that. I'm gonna try and take a picture here of everybody. And feel free to log on and chat.
All right, let me see if I can turn the volume up here. I got the volume turned all the way up. I'm going to move a little closer to the uh, to the front here after all the pictures have been taken. So just hang on. I'm just wondering, can you hear me now okay? So I got the volume turned all the way up. Closer to the speakers. Mic turn on. Uh, somebody can let me know how the sound is. I would be most appreciative. speakers to get started. Hopefully the sound will be going out. I didn't make any adjustments with my camera and I've got the sound turned all the way up. So We should have some speakers in just a moment. Um, for those of you just joining us, uh, we're here at Oakland City Hall at Oscar Grand Plaza. We're the No Dakota Access Pipeline. Check, check, one, two. Good evening, Oakland. Good evening, village of Huchin. Here in the Ohlone territories here that now we call Oakland. Uh, good evening, everybody. Yate, Shie, Manny, Lieris, Yin, Shie. Todish, Chini, Bashish, Chin, Nakai, Dene, Dashanale. Good evening, everybody. My name is Manny Lieris. I am a uh, resident here in Oakland. I've, I've been in Oakland for about 15 years where I, I started doing community work here in the Indian community uh, at an organization called the American Indian Child Resource Center just down the road. Through my um, 
through my college activities uh, and, and active and and active and uh, just um, you know passion to, to make positive changes and be a positive change agent within our community. I got involved a lot with activism uh, to abolish mascots down in San Diego State University, and that all carried and, and, and transformed to where I'm at here this evening to to again stand in solidarity with our relatives in in Standing Rock. What I'm going to do this evening. What I'm going to do this evening is share a little bit about the, the current situation, kind of where we're at uh, as a camp, uh, some of the actions that are going to be taking place in the in the real in the rear uh, in the in the near future to uh, support and, and take supplies out there to those folks who are putting their lives on the line uh, every day by by challenging uh, this system of this systemic systematic oppression that uh, we've endured for 500 plus years as indigenous folks in this land. So the current state, uh, I know there's been a lot of uh, a lot of hype and, and a lot of really uh, high praise to the Obama administration and their um, their order to to seize operations within the 30 mile radius of the, of the lake there at Sacred Stone Camp. Thanks, what that this. means, ladies and gentlemen, is that the the permits to continue construction everywhere else along the 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 path of that pipeline is still active. And so this, this struggle, this fight to protect what is sacred, what the, the, the most, the fundamental element of all life is that water, to protect that and to put an end to the the exploitation of Mother Earth, of our Shemana uh, of all that provides for all of us. And so what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, on Monday, there'll be a caravan leaving from here, uh, from Oakland, um, headed out from right here in downtown Lake Merritt, um, would be headed out with a, um, what we're looking for um, in, in, in forms of support. There's been a, a huge outpour of support. And so the supplies that are now needed are preparations for winter. So if you're going to send anything, send those preparations because, ladies and gentlemen, our winter here is nothing compared to what's what's going to come. Um, North Dakota. With the uh, predictions of, uh, of a La Nina winter and a really cold winter, we're looking at you know negative 30 degrees, Iceberg. negative 45 degrees that these people are going to be held up in a camp. And so what we want to do is make sure that they, they that, that regardless of that weather, that they continue their, their struggle and that prayer in high spirit without being crushed by, 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 that, by, by, the, by the chill and by the cold. So we'll be leaving here on, on Monday. And uh, again, any supplies, uh, the, the campaign is, um, is online. You can look it up. It's a GoFundMe campaign on our, um, you know, one of the, the, our delegation or our caravan that's going out, we're all part of a, a production team called Ingenuity. And Ingenuity, what it is, it's a, uh, a, a segment of, of short stories told by indigenous people all throughout this nation and, and beyond. And these people are sharing their, their perspectives on life and, 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 and providing opportunities for non-indigenous people to reflect inward and see how we can come to positive solutions similar to what this camp is doing right now this camp it, it, the actions there are resonating around the world this is not just the camp that's affecting north dakota or or the or or the sacred stone camp this is a camp that's affecting all the world and there's been prophecies about this long long before america was established long long before people were People were people that we see today. Long before that, there were stories that this that this day would come, that this day is is now here upon us. And these uh, these council fires that have been reestablished out there are are super significant in a, in a sense where, you know, these these fires have been, um, you know, underground for so long, and finally there's been a need to, a need to call them together, and this is that need. And not only those seven council fires, but there's fires all. You know those 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 little fires. There are sparks that are that are creating a larger fire of people to finally again put their foot down and say, you know what, we need to come up with solutions to exploiting exploiting and taking all these fossil fuels. We need to come up with renewable energy strategies and and other and other strategies to protect again what's left of this of this Mother Earth and and to provide those those abilities for her to to regenerate herself. You know, similar our our DNA. Our DNA and her DNA is the same. We we are a part of the earth, and is no is is never been written that 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 what our intentions are as as humans as human beings is to was to come in and, and take and take and take and finally all that taking has has come full circle, 
And so now it's time again that we start that healing process. And so, you know, I want to thank all of you for coming out this evening. Um, what I did is um, I'm a singer. I sing with a, a drum group here out of Oakland, California called the All Nation Singers. And um, last night I was sitting around our, our dinner table and our, my children were watching TV. And uh, as, 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 uh, as romantic as this sounds, it wasn't that romantic, but a song came to me. And uh, it wasn't in a vision. It was just a song that I had kind of been humming around for a while. And, um, you know, these, these types of events deserve their own types of songs because these are things that are, again, not just affecting within, are not affected just within our own community of, of indigenous people, but again, these are, these are things that are, are affecting all people. And those, those type of monumental events, they, they, they deserve their own songs. Um, similar to the songs that were that were established and created in the 1960s during the the AIM uprises and and holding of Wounded Knee and Alcatraz, the, this is the same type of movement that's happening right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're just so uh, lucky to be alive at this time. And so, what I want to do this evening is I want to debut a song again. This is uh, this is the first time it's it's going to be sung. Um, hopefully, it'll it'll catch on and it'll it'll again be one of those sparks that that keeps that fire burning that that again this song is is for this movement as from the, from the most sincere place that that I can be as as again as a child of this earth uh, this is where this song comes from the words of this song are in the Lakota language again because it's that it's that 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 original fire that started there in Standing Rock I thought it was appropriate to put those Lakota words in there and the words say um, Wopila Tunkashala Mini Wuchoni, meaning in the in the utmost sincere of gratitude, not just a thank you, but in the utmost sincerest gratitude to our Creator, we are acknowledging that water is life, and so that's the words to this song. <clears throat> event feel free to, to hand me donations uh, yeah exactly so thank you again thank you again yeah hello again I'm Andres Soto still and uh, I'm here to represent the people of Richmond I'd like to say that I'm with uh, communities for a better environment I'm with the Richmond Progressive Alliance, but I'm also here with Venetians for a Safe and Healthy Community. We are in solidarity 
with the people up there in North Dakota, just like we're in solidarity with all the people who are fighting the fossil fuel industry around the planet. And let's remember, there are indigenous people all over the planet, in addition to here in the Americas. But what's happened here in the Americas, especially in North America, is particularly uh, a, a terrible history of genocide in North America against indigenous people. And we're here to say the genocide did not work the indigenous people of the Americas are still strong, especially here in North America, and they're going to stand up for what's right for themselves. But we have to fight our battles here as well. So next Tuesday night in Benicia, they're going to be voting on whether or not to allow a crude by rail project to go forward. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll vote to give another continuance to Valero so they can avoid making a decision before an election. We know how those squirrely politicians work. But, you know, at the same time, we need to have people show up in Benicia because it's not just a Benicia issue. It's a world issue. We think globally, but we act locally. And we also have a battle going on with the Bay Area Air Quality Management District. The people are supposed to protect our air, protect our public health. Well, fortunately, we have strong allies, like Council Member Rebecca Kaplan, who you're going to hear from a little bit later, who's been standing up to, to help us get rules passed that will protect our health and safety against the wishes of the industry. Unfortunately, portions of the Air District staff are in alliance with the industry. And you'd think, what? What's going on there? Well, you know, that's a much bigger political question. But because of leadership like Rebecca Kaplan, we are going to ensure that this Air District adopt a rule that will limit refinery emissions all across this Bay Area and not allow these greenhouse gases continue to go up. The Bay Area refineries have a plan, just like all the other refineries around the country, to process heavier, dirtier crude oil that will result in more emissions. Unfortunately, we have laws like AB 32 that allow cap and trade, which means Chevron in Richmond gets to purchase offsets in the upper peninsula of Michigan while they pollute more on our people in Richmond, and that ain't right. And so we're fighting that. And next Wednesday, if you can't make it to Benicia on Tuesday, next Wednesday, come to the Air District headquarters. It's just a couple blocks walk from the embarked there of BART. Because we need to tell the Air District that we want to have our project to limit refinery emissions move forward now. We need to sever all these you know, complications the staff is trying to put on it. We need that rule now because the world is not going to get any better unless we take action right now. And so I want to thank everybody for being here. Once again, it's a great thing to be in the Bay Area, especially here in the East Bay, where we got so many people with heart who can feel and support all these struggles around the world. But let us remember, we have struggles here in our own backyard, and we all need to work together on this to make this happen. Because if we can't make the revolution in our own backyard, how can we create revolution around the world? Thank you, everybody. I love you. A greetings to your hearts. Despa Andrea Marie O'Hare Yinishe Nakai Dune and Nishle Irish Swedish Basha Sheen Shema E Teresa Bege Will Ye Shaje E Brian O'Hare Will Ye Ebatai Shiprock New Mexico Dena Sha My name is Despa. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm gonna let my sister here introduce herself. Hi, good, after, uh, good evening. My name is Yvonne Marshall, and can you hear me? Sorry. 
Louder? All right, all right. Okay. My name is Yvonne Marshall. I live here in Oakland. I am Shoshone Bannock, Eastern Shoshone from Fort Hall, Idaho, and also have people in Wyoming, Fort Washington, Wyoming. And today I'm just joining Desi and also my husband, Manny, who just spoke in front of you to share some thoughts. And actually, I didn't know I was going to get up here, so I'm, um, I'm just kind of, you know, things are coming to me as I'm, as I'm talking. But one thing I want to really, really share, and, and this is with all the women. Um, as this standing work has been happening, I've been thinking about the earth and, and the waters that are happening. And it makes me think of what has happened to women in the relationship of our birthing and pregnancy and our womanhood. And it's almost similar to what's going on. It's, it's, it just calls to me because We, we have third, con third country rates of birthing. This is kind of going a little off, but it's all so connected. Like Manny said, this is all connected. Our bodies, they signify the earth. So I want you to think about every single one of us when we're created, we're in water. That's what keeps us going, is the water that we are held in. And our waters today for our Mother Earth, <coughs> they're calling. It's calling us. So if you think, you know, wow, maybe what's, you know, I don't know what's going on or, you know, how do I, how do I fit in this picture? You fit because you're alive. That water runs through your body because from your mother. So I just want you to think about that. here with Standing Rock and we have a responsibility as well to go into our communities here to go back into our families and share what this message means I really feel this is this is the lesson this is the teaching how do we take this message here out because we understand, we fundamentally understand where we're from, from the water. But this message has to go beyond. And so I ask you today to really feel, feel inside your own connection with the water. That calling that she mentioned, the water is a being, it, it has songs. It's a creator. It gives life. And so I wanted to offer a water blessing here with this water from Mount Shasta. Creator, Mother Earth, to the four directions. To the waters here the sacred waters in the bay and the ocean, Mama Ocean. Thank you to all the rivers, the aquifers, the lakes, our dear Lake Merritt here, how we've moved you, we've changed you. We have disrupted your flow. And we call upon you to forgive us. We call upon you to help us wake up and connect. Connect to the healing of what water brings. The healing that is going to bring our humanity together. That is going to weave our humanity together. We are so many water droplets in this ocean of humanity. We deserve to take care of this precious water. Tol, Yehet, Tol, sacred water 
for being in our bodies and our vessel. Thank you for purifying yourself, for giving yourself through the rains from our precious Father's sky. I pray that all the waters in the world, that they hear our call for help, our call for our humanity to wake up, for our human kind to return the kindness of how we care for each other. Thank you to our relatives in Standing Rock who are standing on the front lines to protect our sacred waters. And if you feel the call, Creator, if you are calling out to people in this audience, whatever that call is, Creator, Source, Universe, Mother Earth, that it be so clear in their hearts that they know what the next step is. Whether it's to speak, to call your legislators, your senators, to call the president, to sing, to learn a, a water song, to gather together with the water, to drink clean water, to have clean water in your body, in your thoughts, in the way that we treat each other, creator, I ask you, bring that clarity, the clarity that comes with this water to us as your children, still learning our sacred relationship with this water. And I just want to send our prayers out to DC right now. They're having a rally out there. Incredible speakers that have come from Standing Rock. And may this continue. Thank you all for your presence, for your beautiful, beautiful presence to the waters inside you, to your ancestors. I give my thanks. Thank you. Sego Aguigo, Patricia Tano, Ikok Peshni, Ichiwi, Yunyats. Hi, everybody, my name's Patricia. Um, my Lakota name, I'm Mohawk and French Canadian, and about five years ago was adopted into the Cheyenne River Lakota community. And my, um, my Lakota name is Ikok Peshni, Ichiwi. It means woman does without fear, which is a pretty intense name to live into. <laughs> um, and the person who found my name in ceremony was a man named Eagle Hunter, and he died last year. And in Lakota tradition, after a year, then the releasing the spirit ceremony happens. And so Wilson, uh, my partner and I, we're planning to go back for the ceremony. So we've been planning to go to South Dakota for the last eight months. And the sisters who adopted me are Mabel Ann Eagle Hunter and Madonna Thunderhawk, who are um, veterans of Alcatraz and Wounded Knee. So it's also a big family to be <laughs> adopted into. So as we were preparing to leave for South Dakota, Madonna called and said, we're up at the camp, <laughs> so plan to be here. So we all met in South Dakota in Red Scaffold for the ceremony, and then we drove up to the camp. And so um, folks asked me to talk to you today about that experience. Have any of you been to the camp yet? Okay. Well, so you come up, you know, it's North Dakota, so it's pretty flat, but there is a little bit of a rise. And when you come up over that rise and you look out, there are just 
tents and teepees and cars and pickup trucks and it's amazing it's just it made me weep really to see the space and so we came in and there's somebody who welcomes you at the gate and then when you drive in there's a circle and on the outside of the circle are all the tents and the campers and the camps and the sleeping bags and everybody lives there and then in the middle of the circle is the central fire and then there are tents for the legal team and tents for the um, resource team and tents for and then there's a big kitchen and a giant fire and um, so it's overwhelming it's really powerful you feel the energy as you walk in that says we are both ancient and brand new we are rooted profoundly in our history and we're reimagining ourselves again and so that powerful energy is just palpable and so there's a lot going on so Madonna asked me to come and speak at the mic which was very amazing and so I greeted people from I don't know more SF Bay <laughs> so <laughs> That was very fun and very exciting because I'm a member of um, I don't know more here and then from the Haudenosaunee people and really re just was so grateful to be there and then after, as Wilson and I were kind of roaming around and checking everything out one after another nations came to the mic and said we're Comanche and we're here in solidarity. And we're Shoshone, and we're here in solidarity. And it was just amazing. It's um, very moving to be there. And so, um, so we said, what can we do to help? <laughs> and one of the elder women brought us over to this big tarp. And she pulled it off, and it was full of bags of potatoes. <laughs> So for the next couple of hours, Wilson and I just picked out all the rotten stuff. She was like, don't peel them. Just take the stuff out that we can't eat. And so we ended up doing like, I don't know, two, three hundred pounds of potatoes. And then I went to help get somebody to come and help me move that big bin of potatoes. And when, when we came back, the potatoes were... <coughs> And so I walked over to the kitchen, and they were already in the pot. And 20 minutes later, they were lunch. <laughs> and so it was, for me, an experience of everybody finding a place and doing what you can to support this community that is so amazing. And then about a mile up the road, there is a, um, a smaller camp where folks are actually at the dig site. They're on the road there making sure that the, the equipment doesn't move. And when you come across over that and see that camp, that's also where all the nations have planted their flags. And so it's very powerful to look up and see your flag. So the Haudenosaunee, there were actually two Haudenosaunee flags on the fence or posted there so it's it's a place where i think we have an opportunity to be a witness to people reclaiming our ancestral ways and we all have that connection with our ancestors that has been severed in one way or another some by violence and some voluntarily some by the pressure of assimilation and some by enslavement but those connections are still there and john trudell used to say we're all indigenous to somewhere and so my invitation to you is to find the place of your own indigeneity and reconnect there and see your your solidarity work as partnered with that I think our yearning to be connected 
is sometimes manifests in appropriation. And so we want to both recognize and honor that yearning, which is really authentic and very real and in all of us, and our need to reconnect with our traditions so be, beyond colonization and, and assimilation so that when we do come together, it's really from a position of strength and unity. Um, and I wanted to do a shout out for um, Karina Gould and <laughs> yeah, and recognize that we're guests on her homeland, that this, this is Ohlone land. She's not the only one, obviously, but so here we are on Ohlone land, and I want us to just take a moment to remember that and to honor the people who struggle here and to support their work. And to that end, Segura Tay, Glen Cove, Saturday, there's a gathering to begin the, to launch the Run for Salmon. And so if any of you are available and can go out there on Saturday, that would be great. And then Tuesday, there's an action. Um, shoot, I'm forgetting where it is, but there, there are decision makers everywhere who are making decisions without us in mind. And we need to remind them that we're here. And that the decisions that they make now will have an impact for seven generations. And we represent those generations. And so wherever you come into contact with decision makers, right here behind us at the port, wherever decisions are being made, when they're not being made with the seventh generation in mind, it's our responsibility and our invitation to remind folks. And so thank you very much for coming here. This is great. This is really great. We are just the edge. There's a whole, when people know what's really going on, most of them want to be here. And so talk about it. Tell people what's going on. And you'll be surprised how little people know and how ready they are to learn and to do more. So thank you very much for being here. Well, it's great to be here. It's great to be here with you. It's great to see folks turn out. You know, this is such an important issue. This is water. You know, this is not something to mess with. This is the basis of all life. You know, we're supposed to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. And that means, you know, speaking up for the folks that are out there in North Dakota that have been stepped on by the government so much because nobody cares. To connect their struggle to Flint, Michigan and, and, and to the Navajo Reservation where the rivers are running with uranium. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to stand up for those folks who can't stand for themselves, for the, for the babies, for the elders, for the weak, for the sick. This is our responsibility of what we need to do. This is our rent for living on Earth. We all breathe air. We all drink water every last one of us, our whole lives long. If we don't take care of these things, we're dead. It's that simple. That simple. If we don't take care of these things, we're dead. The whole world. Not just us as human beings, the arrogant ones that think we're above everything, that think we're so advanced. This means death for the fish, this means death for the bugs, for the grass, for the buffalo, for everything, because water is the foundation for all life. And it's great to see folks in North Dakota standing up for themselves, because that's what we all got to do as well. We all got to stand up for ourselves, all of us. That's
that's our responsibility too, because when we stand up for ourselves and we stand up for what we need as people, we stand up for others, because what we need is what we all need. We all need justice, we all need clean water, we all need clean air. We need to stand up for these things, and when we stand up for these things for ourselves, we stand up for each other. So, you know, it's great to see us out here. It's great to see so many faces here in Oakland today. It's great to know that folks are up in Albany and San Francisco and San Jose doing the same thing right now in Los Angeles, across the whole country and across the world. You know, this is, this is a time right now in life, in the world, where some serious things are coming down and we all can sense it. We can all feel it in our bones. We understand that there isn't much time left to make changes so that we might have a future. And this requires drastic action, and it requires real commitment. And this is what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing in the folks in North Dakota who decided that this is enough, that they will protect what they need to live. And they put their bodies on the line, and I know that some of them have promised that they will not be moved by anything less than victory or death. So, please, it's great to see you here today, but we need to see this kind of commitment from all of us all the time. This needs to be a sustained effort from folks. People need to keep coming out, and people need to not only worry about when it's in North Dakota, and yes, it's great that they're standing up because they're standing up for us too, but we also need to stand up when it's in Benicia, happening right in our backyard. We also need to stand up when the Ohlone folks are having their graves dug up right here in Berkeley. We need to be able to stand up with white people, black people, Asian people, any people. When we, when it's the plants, when it's the fishes, we cannot continue to poison this water if we want to live. It's that simple. So. Uh, I'm Herman Dietz, Mashpee Wampanoag, with Ida Lamorsa SF Bay. Thank y'all. Good evening, everybody! My name is Rebecca Kaplan, and I have the distinct honor to represent the entire city of Oakland as your citywide elected council member at large. And I am proud to represent a city that has such a strong presence of First Nations peoples and a city that stands up for justice. And today I'm here as the author of the Oakland Council resolution that we just put in to get Oakland officially on the record opposing the Dakota Pipeline. <laughs> Together, we are going to say no to the destruction of the earth. Together, we are going to say no to the poisoning of the water. Together, we are going to say no to the abuse of the native peoples of this land. <laughs> And we are going to say no to the greed and destructiveness of the oil industry. And say yes to life. And you know, this isn't a fringe issue. I mean, the only people who need to care about this are those who need to breathe the air and drink the water. And so we have an opportunity to continue these successes as we stood together here in Oakland and said no to the coal shipping terminal. And we stopped it. And then we went to the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, which some call BACMID, and we said no to oil refinery pollution. And we're going to cap that too. And now we have a responsibility, a moral obligation, both to future generations and to the people whose lives are being threatened right now with violence, 
with dogs and pepper spray and with the violence of the pipeline itself to stand united for a world of respect and to re honor the First Nations peoples, the Native American peoples of this land, and to honor the land itself as we work together to say no to this and that Oakland will join other cities and build and of course the tribes are already on board and other groups are joining in that we can all together say that we are going to value every life and that we are going to value the earth and the water that sustain life and that as uh, the great science says you can't drink oil and we cannot afford to let the water be poisoned and so uh thought I'd close with uh, a song. Eli, Eli, Shelo Igamel Olam, Ha Chol Ve Hayam, Rish Rush Shel Hamayim, We pray that these things never end. The sand and the sea, the rush of the waters, the crash of the heavens, the prayer of the heart. So may it be. Thank you. which means first singing woman from the Blackfeet tribe from Montana. And uh, I'm here on behalf of San Francisco uh, No Dapple with uh, Penny, Pam, and Karina. And uh, they weren't able to make it, so uh, they asked if one of us could make it out there. So we're here. I'm here. We're here in spirit. And um, I'm going to, I just had a couple words I wanted to say before I um, share the water song with you, the Ojibwe water song. We uh, have been doing the water walk, annual water walk in San Francisco for the healing of the water, praying for healing of the water for uh, the past five years. And uh, the water is very sick and the water needs healing with all this uh, polluted waters and the pipelines, you know, that have been leaking and um, contaminated water and the, the animals are sick. And uh, the, wa the song says, water we need you, water we love you. Uh, water we, we pray for your healing and I just wanted to I took a couple notes down here and I'm sure you've all uh, heard heard these before and I want to repeat uh, mini wichoni water is life the water is sick and needs healing uh, we are not protesters but we are protectors of the land we are caretakers of the land our ancestors prayed for this. Our ancestors are the original environmentalists and caretakers of this land. And we are here today because of their prayers. And uh, there, needs to, uh, there needs to be a, a stop. A stop needs to be put to these pipelines. And uh, we need to keep raising awareness. And this is uh, not, not the, the end, but only the beginning. This is the beginning. And so many people have come together. And uh, let's keep raising awareness. And, uh, this is a time of unification, and this is a time to rise. And uh, we're doing this for our future generations, for our children and their children and their children, so that they can have clean water to drink and a healthy earth to live on. We are connected with Mother Earth. We're like uh, we're connected to Mother Earth like an umbil umbilical cord is connected from each and every one of us to Mother Earth, and uh, we need we need her to be preserved. Um, and we need to preserve our sacred sites. We need to uh, preserve our sacred water and protect our Mother Earth. And, and our ancestors spoke of this prophecy of this time coming, you know, when these things would happen and there's climate change and there's disasters happening already, environmental disasters. And 
there's more to come. So this is only the beginning. And so we all need to uh, unify and, and work together and raise awareness and uh, uh, continue this fight. And so uh, the song that I'm going to sing this evening is oh, also and also say, you know, that we don't come in violence. We are peace, peaceful, you know, peaceful. This is a peaceful protect. And so we want to remind people that. Uh, so thank you. And the song is um, Ojibwe water song. Nibe Gija for all of us with the no. overall scene. You're right in the middle of it. Amitakwe uh, P. Leonard Alden Jr. put up Hachi Apalo. Now who the Kota Wichasha Hemiolo. My name is Leonard Alden Kurok Jr. I come from the Rosebud Indian uh, Reservation, South Central South Dakota. I am uh, directly connected with a lot of uh, relatives who are there in front line. Closer to the mic. Uh, through the bloodlines and through all the rest. Uh, through all the Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I, I don't know if I can hear me. Can you hear me now? All right. I'll say this again. My name is Leonard Alden Crowdog Jr. I come from the Rosebud Indian Reservation, South Central South Dakota. I want to move off the side a little bit here. I'm complaining. I'm here in solidarity with all my relatives back home, all my relatives in Standing Rock, directly connected with the people that are on the front lines, not just the ones that are on online, but the ones that are in front lines. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for your support. All the media, all the everything that we're doing, because we're having 100% media blackout right now. As we speak, there are armed policemen on site right now. The Morton County Sheriff Police Department had armed their cops now, so they're up there with full riot gear and firearms. So we need those prayers to be as pure and as strong as possible, relatives. I just want to uh, say uh, a, a few words like that upon um, here in this uh, this village of Huchin, Oholone, Makhoche, this uh, Oholone territory. So I just want to acknowledge like that where I am, where I come from. Um, and I'm here on behalf of my family. I, I wasn't expecting to come up here and talk 
but that's just the way the spirit works. We're all here because we all have the combination to the lock to the prayer. That's why you're all here. My father, Leonard Kodog, always says, the reason why you're all here is because you're part of that combination, each and every one of you. Your prayers, your thoughts, your words, and your actions, most importantly. So I just want to thank each and every, every one of you because it is true, not to be so mundane, but we've been saying that water is life. We need to be chon yellow. Water is life. Your body is made of water. All, every relatives, no matter what, your DNA, we all come from that same water. This is not an Indian issue. This is a human being issue. This is a conscious effort of an issue of our future as children, our little ones running around here. That's why we're doing this. That is why I'm <laughs> That's why I'm standing here on behalf of my son. He is very restless. Sorry, he's been at school all day. He didn't want to come and protest, but we came in anyway. So with that being said, I just want to say I love each and every one of y'all. Thank you for standing with Sandy uh Sandy Rock, Lakota, Wichasha Hemielo, all your relatives. This is a human being issue. So with that, I'm gonna share a short song for you relatives. Good evening. I'm Kurt 
Kuala, the Unitarian Universalist Minister. I'm here speaking for Surge, showing up for racial justice. That is an organization that works to organize white people to stand in solidarity with people of color. I have to tell you, I'm very humbled to be up here. I'm very humbled to be standing here speaking in this arena where people are sacrificing, where people are stepping forward, where people are going deep in 